Now today we're going to be making a red velvet cake. Now I'm going to make mine a little bit more romantic because I'm going to bake mine in the shape of a heart. So I've got myself a tin in the shape of a heart so it's an ideal one for Valentine's Day. So for making up this red velvet cake I'm just going to go through the ingredients for making up the cake mixture and then once we've got that on the go we'll make this sort of icing like a frosting that's going to go in the middle and on top. So let's go through the ingredients for making the cake mixture. Now I've got it all laid out all measured up, ready to go, keeps your life nice and easy. Now I've got 300 grams of caster sugar, 300 grams of plain flour, 120 grams of butter. Now my butter's at room temperature because that makes it a little bit easier to sort of mix up. Two large eggs, and then I've got some buttermilk. Now, Buttermilk, you can buy it from supermarkets, quite easy. It's with the sort of creme fraiche and double cream and all that sort of stuff. Now, I've actually weighed mine in grams because if you can't get buttermilk, the important thing is to use 230 grams of full fat milk instead. So if you do it in grams, you'll get a fairly accurate measurement. So I've got 230 grams of buttermilk or full fat milk one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, one teaspoon of white wine vinegar, 20 grams of cocoa powder, and then I've got my food coloring. Now, I'm gonna use this one, this is like a paste. It's concentrated, and I think you get a better color from it. I'm actually gonna use a fair amount, so about half of that pot, now, if you can't get the paste, don't worry, you can use the liquid. Got a small bottle of sort of liquid there. This one's actually green, but you, you know, obviously can buy it in red. And what I would say is, if you're using the liquid, you probably need to use the whole bottle. Because remember, this is a red velvet cake, and it's got to look red. So now I've gone through the ingredients, what I'm gonna do is clear the decks, get myself a bowl, and I'm gonna start making up this cake mixture. So I've got myself a bowl, and I'm gonna start making up this mixture. Now, I'm just gonna put the butter in, the cast of sugar, and really, I'm just gonna put it all in. Just keeps it nice and simple doing that way. And it will still come out really well. Now, I am just gonna sift the flour just to take some of the lumps out. So get a little bit of air in there as well. And also, we've got that cocoa powder, I might as well just put that through the sieve as well. And then we've got the salt, vanilla extract, and we've got a couple of eggs as well. So let's just put those in the pot. I mean, it's so easy, this recipe, because you just put the whole lot in the pot, whisk it up, get it mixed up, and it's gonna be good. Now, I'm just gonna mix this up. You can do it by hand, but I'm a little bit lazy, and I've got an electric mixer, so I'm just gonna put that. Whisk this nice and slow to start with. That's it, that's starting to come together a little bit. Now let's put that food colouring in. Now with this food colouring, so I've got about half a pot left and I'm going to use all of that. So let's just get that all out of there. If I just wipe that on there. Like that. And again, carry on whisking. Nice and slowish to start with. Oh, look at that colour coming. Oh, beautiful. That is what we are looking for. It is a red velvet cake, so it's got to look red. And once you get it going, you can speed it up, but be careful because you don't want splatters of red food colouring all over your walls. And just carry on doing that until it's all nicely incorporated. There you go. I think we're just about done. So let's just switch this off. Lovely. Oh, looks delicious already. And what I might do is just scrape around the edge of the bowl. Like that. There you go. 
just to get those last little bits in there. Lovely. Now at this point, you should end up with a lovely red mixture like I've got there. Now what I'm gonna do next is to add the bicarbonate of soda and directly on top of it, you wanna just put the white wine vinegar and you can see that's already kind of reacting together. So let's get our mixer and again, just on a slow speed, mix that together. Just to bring that together. Lovely. There's the mixture, all done. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna leave mine for 20, maybe 30 minutes, because sometimes that helps for the color to develop. So if you haven't got your oven on, switch it on, get it preheated. Now temperature-wise, put it on at 170 degrees Celsius, 325 Fahrenheit, gas mark three. And I'll see you in about 20 to 30 minutes. Now I've left my cake mixture for about half an hour and look at the beautiful color on that. So what we're gonna do is start cooking it up. Now I've got my cake tin and these, this cake tin is a heart shape. You know, I thought we'd make it romantic for Valentine's Day and it's got a false bottom. So if we just drop that in there, right to the bottom, and then what we should do is just pull that together. So it's like a spring form, so it opens up when you wanna take it out. So that is ready to go now. Now, I'm gonna put some butter at the bottom of this, all the way around the edges, all around the bottom and everywhere really. Try and get a good layer of butter because we don't want it sticking. So I've got a little bit of butter there and we're just gonna go around the whole inside out really. All the way around. So there we go, we've got the butter on there. So all we need to do now is to pour the mixture in and put it in the oven. Now I'm just gonna just scrape that in. Oh yeah. Mm -mm. That's it. Get the last little bit out of that bowl. Waste not, want not. And then we can just kind of push it round to the edges. All the way around. And it also helps if you can just move it around so you, you haven't got any air bubbles in there. So you just give it a wobble around. Like that. And again, give it a quick shake. Even it out a little bit. Now I'm going to put that on a baking tray just in case there's any leakage. So get myself a baking tray like that. And I'm going to pop that into the preheated oven. So I'm just going to pop that in the oven. Now obviously as I say, it's a preheated oven. And temperature wise, I've got mine at 170 degrees Celsius, 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is gas mark three. Now really, it's gonna rise, look golden brown on top. You can always test it by sticking a skewer or a knife in to make sure that the mixture's all cooked inside. And again, it shouldn't be wobbly. I would say you're probably looking up to an hour really, depending on your oven. So keep an eye on it. What I would say is put your timer on for 45 minutes and then we can check it after 45 minutes, see how it is. If it needs a little bit more cooking, then we'll carry on cooking. So now we've got the cake in the oven, cooking away. Now we might as well get on with the frosting that's gonna go over the top of the cake. And also, because I'm gonna cut my cake in half, we're also gonna put some in the middle of it as well. Now for making the frosting, I'm gonna use 180 grams of butter, again at room temperature, 150 grams of icing sugar, 200 grams of a cream cheese. I decided to use Philadelphia. And then I'm gonna use a little dash 
of vanilla extract. So let's move that back, get a bowl. I'm gonna start mixing it up. Now I'm gonna mix this by hand. So let's start with the butter. Just put that all in there. Then I'm gonna put the icing sugar in. Now you can sift that if you want, so you get rid of some of the lumps, but you know, it doesn't matter. And also, Philadelphia, this cream cheese. Now this pot is 200 grams, so it's kind of handy. And I'm just gonna put the whole lot in there. That's it. Just get the last bit out, lovely. Now a little bit of vanilla extract. So I think I'll just pour it into the cap so we don't overdo it. That's it, just like a little dash really. Now I'm gonna mix this up. So, you know, just squash the butter down, mix it all up where everything, until it's gone, you know, all into a nice sort of paste really. So I'll just carry on doing that. I mean, you could do this with an electric whisk, very slow, but it tends to sort of, you know, the icing sugar tends to make a bit of a mess if you're not careful. So just do it by hand, it don't take too long. There you go, just scrape the bottom, make sure you've got it all nicely incorporated. And that frosting is pretty much ready to go. So now I've got the frosting all done. Now we're just gonna leave that aside, wait for the cake. Once that's ready to go, we can pull it out, leave it to cool down, and then obviously I'm gonna cut it in half, put some of the frosting in the middle, and then over the top of the cake. But it's important to make sure your cake has cooled down before you put the frosting on. Now I've had my cake cooking for 45 minutes. Let's have a little look at this. Ooh, that is looking wonderful. Now let's just test this and see how it is. First of all, you can, you know, just do a quick test. You can see if how wobbly it is. It's a little bit wobbly, but let's do the knife test. So what we do is we poke the knife in, pull it out. Now that's obviously not done, so I'm going to leave that in there and carry on cooking. Now I've left me cake a little bit longer. In fact, it's been cooking for 55 minutes, so not quite an hour. Let's have a look. Look at that, it's got a beautiful colour on top. And let's just try that. That's come out nice and clean. So that is ready to go. So obviously it depends exactly on your oven, but I'm going to pull that out and let it cool down. Now I've just taken it out of the oven and that looks absolutely delish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for five minutes or so to settle down, let it cool down slightly in the tin. And then what we can do is we can, you know, take the spring off, let it sort of spring out, and then we're going to transfer it onto a wire rack and leave it to cool down fully. So wait at least five minutes before you pop it open. Now I've left mine for about five minutes. You know, you can always check the tin, see how hot it is. I can just about handle that. You could leave it for 10 minutes. Now what I'm gonna do is just take the spring off, loosen it off a little bit. And then you've got to be careful at this point. And let's lift it up, take that away. And I've got a wire rack there, which I'm gonna use just to put it on. Now, if we just carefully, got a cloth there, I'm doing it. But it's still a little bit off. And just go round and push it through. That's it, that's it. And then we can put it on the wire rack. Now I'm gonna leave it on that base at the moment. And there you go, you've got a beautiful looking cake. Now what you need to do is have a bit of patience at this point and leave it to cool right down. You want it, you know, nice and cold. So I'm gonna leave mine probably for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back. We can cut it in half, put the frosting in the middle, put it over the top and we'll have a delicious cake to serve up. So leave that to cool down and I'll see you in about an hour. Now I've left my cake for just about an hour and it's just about cooled right down now. So. I'm going to transfer mine onto a plate, then we're going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to put the frosting in the middle and on the top. So let's just very carefully see if we can lift it away from the base. That's it. 
Be very careful at this point. Now, plate wise, obviously you can use what you like. I'm going to use this red one actually, as it's a Valentine's cake. Oh, yeah. Now we good. What we next need to do is to cut it in half. So, to cut it in half, be very careful. Try and find about the middle. And I'm going to use like a, a little bread knife and just try and cut through so you're getting it in the middle. Now I'm just going to take the lid off this cake and again, do be careful. And if I just tuck that in there, I should be able to lift that off there. Oh, look at that beautiful red cake. That looks absolutely wonderful. Now let's get the frosting. Got it all there. Ooh. Better save some for the top, eh? Now let's put the top of that cake on. So we should, if we're careful, just be able to slide that on top. Let's see how I do. And then we can just move it on. And there you go. We've got that lovely sort of buttercream sort of mixture in the middle. And now we've got to do is put it on top. And it doesn't matter about all these sort of, it's not quite 100% on top, the way it looks, because by the time you put this frosting on, nobody's gonna know. Yeah. Well, let's just start smoothing it out. Hmm. So, there we are. There's my cake. If I just put that last bit on there, and that is all done. So there you have it, I've got my red velvet cake and we've got the frosting in the middle, on top, and I've served mine up on a red plate. I mean, maybe it looks better on a white plate. I might actually transfer it, just take a couple of pictures, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try some. Now I'm just going to cut a little bit off and uh, try a little bit of this, so I'm not sure where to tackle it. I think I'm going to go in there. So let's just take a nice chunk out of there. Oh yeah. Cut that there like that. Mm -hmm. And again, just gonna slip that underneath very carefully. Oh. oh, that looks delish. Let's show you a little bit of a close up before I tuck into that. I'm kind of tempted to sort of grab the whole thing, but hmm, yeah, I think I will actually. I'm gonna pick it up and eat it like a nice piece of cake. Oh, that is looking good. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. It's good off. Mm. No, no. Mm. Mm. That is delicious. Absolutely delicious. If you make this up for someone for Valentine's Day, they're going to love it. It's homemade. It's thoughtful, romantic, it's beautiful. Go and make it and enjoy. Thanks for watching my videos and I hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to rate me videos and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon, the original Naked Chef. Mm. Oh, wonderful, absolutely wonderful.